But like you said at the very beginning, as you will soon become clear, my technical skills will be quite clunky. Um, ask me any detail you want on cyclocross, and I'm all over that. But um, computer skills, Zoom, and the uh, PowerPoint presentation is uh, is is not quite my forte. But but we'll crack on. So let's uh, first of all, I shall start start with sharing my screen. Here we go, and we're straight into. PowerPoint presentation. So uh, we've come up with a talent uh, cyclocross challenge because we're all in lockdown and we can't, we can't crack on with RSRs. We need, we need something to get young cross riders enthused, uh, technical skills going, a bit of competition element, but most of all fun. And this is going to be about fun. And um, hopefully if this all works and everyone gets really stuck into it, it's going to bring everyone together in, a, in some sort of a competition, which we'll see at the end of end of four weeks work. So if we go on to the next slide, you've, you've all been sent the email that, that you've found this with, but that also has got a Microsoft Forms link on it. And I know some of you actually already filled this in. Um, and each week, over three weeks, we're each going to do a different form. And so this week, we're going to look at the first form and an overall explanation of what we're doing. But each week, there's going to be different aspects. So week one's hurdles. Week two starts into run with the bike on the flat, flat land. And week three will be corners. And when you've submitted all your forms back to me, and I'll explain mm -hmm. the forms in a little bit, then you'll get an invite to another Zoom meeting, which is the grand final. And in that grand final meeting, I'll explain to you what's going to happen. And you're going to link all these three bits together. And over a simple format, which is easy to mark out and somewhere everyone will be able to go, we're going to be able to get some sort of comparable result and we'll get a virtual virtual table and we'll put everyone's results together and we'll have a bit of a bit of fun and see how everyone's done and there'll also be a bit of video verification if that makes sense uh, so let me show you here we go now i need to show you the microsoft form so we're on so everyone's received this and at the, at the top there, you'll see there's a link to the YouTube channel. Now, I'm not going to play the video now because it's quite likely that it will make everything crash. But this is a really good video of some of the junior GB riders doing uh, just a simple planks, dismount and remount. And as the video goes on about halfway through, it flips to the other side, the other angle, and it goes into slow-mo. And it's a really good reference, amongst other things that will be all over the internet, a good reference of, of good and some average techniques but but a really good reference and guide so this microsoft forms is is pretty much just a bit of a tick list it's a few questions on it um and it, it the the biggest thing for me will be to just see who's who's doing it each week so question one is just just trying to work out where you're up to at the moment what your confidence level is and already someone's put in the reference, in the responses I've had, someone's yes, very confident, cannot possibly improve. So all good for them. Can't wait to see how fast they're going to go. Question two is, is more coaching points for you, just to tick off, just so, and we'll break that down in a minute into what the setup, the execute and the completion looks like. And then it just gives you a few, few key points on what, what you can do there. And then point three is some details of, of what you want to use, what you can use, and what you're thinking to try and do. So you're going to need to do two even planks or hurdles and roughly around four metres apart. So if you look at the rules in racing, it can be between four and six metres in a race. And you're going to want to look to aim to be getting over something 40 centimetres high, which is the maximum height they can be in a race. So if you've practised to that, it's not going to be a surprise when you get there. And for now, what we're going to look to do, as you'll see in the final, is down the length of a football pitch. So if you mark out something in the centre of the football pitch, two hurdles, that's what you're looking to try and practice in this, this first sort of set of skills. And section four, once we've been through all this, it's just going to uh, reinforce where you think you're up to. So if you were already perfect to start with, obviously you're amazing anyway and you can't possibly improve. So that's fine. Um, and then at the end, if you could just stick your name on there for me, and then we'll know where we're up to and who's done it. So we, as I said, after three weeks of each one, I'm going to have everyone's names and then you'll get the invite to the final. Okay. I'll go back to me 
PowerPoint. I've joined it, so. <laughs> You've Can I just, I've do, just make sure everyone's muted the mic, please? I'm just turn my camera off and doing it on my day. So, where can you do it? So, I've already spoken okay. about doing it on the length of a football pitch. And what might you need? So, you could use bidons. You could do drink bottles with a, a garden cane over the top. Anything you think will help you to do it properly. I don't want people to start having to make great big planks or anything, any elaborate demountable hurdle device. Let's think about what you can use that's useful to you. And you can stick in a rucksack and take out there with you. Garden canes are a really good way. If you break garden canes, often use clothes pegs on them. You have two uprights, two, two clothes pegs on there, and you can balance another garden cane across. You've got three garden canes making a hurdle. And it's just simple ways that you can use just to, just to recreate some sort of a hurdle. That makes sense? So the specifics of what we're looking to do. This will be a reinforcement, as I said before in the email, to those that came on the RSR of what we're looking for or the technique that we're trying to perfect here. So yeah, this is all about your setup. You're coming in towards your planks and you're getting ready. This is all about controlling your speeds, getting your hands in, in position, getting, you, getting your body ready to, to execute this movement. Now you wanna bring your, your leg over the saddle before you move your hands. You don't wanna be doing it the other way around because you create un, unbelievable instability. Once your leg's over, then you can move your hand towards the top tube as you'll see Jeremy Powers and the other guy doing here. And you're getting yourself into that really strong three point touching the bike and you're getting ready, you can glide there. You could glide in as far as you wanted at this point. But as you perfect it, you're going to do it as close as you can. And you'll notice we're not encouraging the step through again. People will call it the kickback or the skip, but we're keeping the feet positioned just like Jeremy Powers in that first, first video there with the, he's got his right foot behind his left and he comes in in that position. On to the execution of the actual over the obstacles now. So what we're looking through is a, Basically, you want to carry as much momentum and be efficient as possible. Now, you'll see here the top right is Ian Field flying across them as quick as he can, and he's lifting his bike. He's going so quick, he's lifting it on a slight angle. It's almost a flick to the side. And you'll see a, a, the uh, slower example over on the bottom left of Tom Pidcock, and you'll see Eli Ease a bit has actually picked his bike up there. Now, sometimes if it's really muddy, you're not going to want to lift your heavy bike or you're not going to want to drag it through the mud so it might be easier to put it up on your shoulder that's something just to keep thinking about and just the way that cyclocross techniques often change so you've often got to think on your feet and and the final part to this is putting the bike down gently we don't want to be slamming these expensive bikes on the floor you might damage your bike but worse still you'll drop your chain which loses your time and therefore loses your all that efficient energy that you've put into your bike if that makes sense Complete. So you'll see some really good, there's two fantastic examples here. You've got Rory Maguire at the top of the picture and you've got Josie Nelson at the bottom, both on the right-hand side. And look how, how efficient they are. Their legs are just skimming the saddle and they're, all their energy is keeping that bike moving forward. Now you look at the small picture with the woman with the back, number five on her back and she's really high and about to land with all her weight straight down through her saddle. So all her energy is pushing that bike into the ground, not pushing it forward. And it's a really inefficient, an efficient way of, of um, getting back on your bike. <clears throat> so little points that you'll, you'll get from the, so you want to dismount as late as possible and you want to remount as soon as possible. We're looking to do minimal steps. And those of you that were on the RSR will look, Remember, we were trying to just count how many steps we could do. So that's the, the basic technique covered, gabbled through it a little bit. But basically, the more you repeat, 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 the more you the, the technique becomes ingrained and into your hard drive. It becomes second nature. World champions are the hardest workers. They're not just born with some gift. To be able to do these techniques they work hard and make it look effort effortlessly an example of a of a good technique might have been the world championships which i hope to, most of you watched this weekend just gone sand is not naturally um a, a surface that that british riders come across um much as all the elite riders have practiced it and trained it as much as they can it's still something of a weakness for some of them when they become tired any sort of problems any sort of 
uh, any sort of flaws in their their handbook of skills, you would see in the sand there where, where they came home stuck a little bit and that, that created some real big differences. So the more you can drive these techniques into your subconscious, into your hard drive, the better it's going to be for everybody. And there's one other little thing I'd like to share before. Oh, how's that gone now? How's that done now? Just while we think on, there's, a, there's a, some more Zwift activity that are going on by the talent team. They've, they've put in loads of stuff. So every Wednesday, if you look on the British Cycling website for talent, you'll find there's a race or a training session going on every week. Now, these really complement all this technical stuff that we're doing in cross. This talent, they've got a whole package of, of an array of uh, offerings for you, if that makes sense. So I really encourage you to get stuck in with that as much as possible. So, does anybody have any questions? Would anyone like to run through it again? Would anyone like to be brave and put the hand up? If everyone's happy, set up, execute, complete. I shall stop sharing my screen. And so what we're going to do now is everyone's got those, those forms already. I'm going to go through those forms. And then the next Tuesday, there's a help session for anyone that wants to just talk through anything at all, talk through a technique, just generally ramble about cyclocross, wants a bit more information on anything. Please get in touch next Tuesday. And then the following Friday, we'll have session two, technique two, all building towards this final. Does that make sense for everybody? Anyone got thumbs up? The Cooper family, can you understand everything I've gabbled through there? You've got thumbs up. Mr. Adams, did you understand everything? Perfect. If that's all, everyone's happy, I shall leave it and I'll say that's a wrap. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank Catch you. you next week. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.